got to put the Miss Pearl bag. There you go. <gasps> Ooh -wee. Oh, that's good fashion. Oh my God, this couple. Mm hmm. Couple goals. Couple goals for the crocheter and the knitter. Ooh. Stephanie made that one, right? Um, the, the shop. Mm hmm. Stephanie Kendra Limon. I think we make a pretty good team. Welcome back everybody to another episode of Here Limon's Crochets. Hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm over here in the corner at my local yard shop, Miss Pearl. And that's why I have my mask here too, just in case people are rocking by and I can put it on. I have an exciting new video to show you guys. You guys have been asking me for tutorials and I'm slowly coming back and bringing that into the channel again. So this time, what I'm going to do is actually show you step by step on how to create the simplest mittens you could create in terms of uh, crocheting. Miss Pearl here, she has a campaign. It is a campaign in which we are all creating mittens to donate this winter. But she created these little kits, adorable, with a little bag and everything with Miss Pearl logo on it. And you really don't know what you're getting. So you pick whatever bag is at the time. They, she has it in DK, worsted, and um, uh, bulky. So you can either pick of three sizes and then just pick a random bag and whatever color you get is whatever color you get and then you make mittens and then you're going to donate them to her uh, collective that she has going on. So for future reference, I am going to be using an F hook, which is 3.75 millimeters for the DK. And that's just from the experience of me already using DK weight, so I kind of know that that's like my hook size that I like to use. Alright, so let's go ahead and see what's inside here. So first thing that comes out is you get a nice little explanation of the campaign from Miss Pearl. Uh, hello Fiber Friend, thank you for your talents and compassion. I am excited to see and share the pair of mittens you will stitch. Know that the energy and time that you see into this project with your hands will bless the hands of another. And then it comes with a free pattern. I believe this is knit. Uh, it's called the World's Simplest Mitten. So you get a copy of it. You get a nice little coupon if you participate in the Captain Pain. Obviously, it needs to be wrapped in pink. And let's find out what I got. All right, so check out this yarn, guys. This is the one that I got in the bag. It's a nice little collection of colors. Cool. So hopefully you guys like this new setup that we got here at Miss Pearl. And like I said, I'll be incorporating more tutorials for you guys since we have this beautiful, beautiful setup of the yarn and everything like that. So let's go ahead and start. So normally with a DK weight, I like to do uh, measurements based on my hand so they're not gonna be too big they're gonna be for someone who is roughly about my size of hand so let's go ahead and figure out what that is so we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten five thirty six thirty seven thirty eight and then I'm gonna go ahead and measure on my wrist so I'm gonna put it on here and I can see that it's kind of big already so I'm gonna go ahead and take away four one, two, three, four. And I'm showing you guys the complete process. So this is exactly a way that you can measure your wrist. And if you think that it's already too big, you can go ahead and decrease. So don't worry about it if you guys don't do it perfectly. One, two, three, four. You can always add and you can always decrease. So never fret, measure, and go accordingly. So I think this should be fine. Yeah, so that's actually better. That's fine for me. You can always go back and add ribbing and then decrease on it if you need to. Is make sure everything is straight. Make sure there's no twists in there. Make sure it's nice and flat. When you find it, go ahead and put it. I just put it on the top one. Doesn't really matter which one you put it in. Grab your yarn and pull through. Okay. And then here you can kind of test it out to see if it's going to be good or not. So I'm kind of struggling to like put it on and off. Which I guess is fine, but for all intents and purposes, since I do want someone to fit into these, I'm going to go ahead and do four more. Remember, when you do that first initial row, it will be super, super tight. So you need to make sure that it's nice and loose for someone's hands to go in and out of it rather relatively nicely. Cool. So now we have our ring here. 
and you're gonna go ahead and start. You're gonna do one, because I'm gonna do half double crochets for the ribbing. So I'm just gonna add one half double crochet into all of them. Make sure you start off on that first one that you have. That is your first one. You're gonna go all the way around, adding one half double crochet. And if you guys notice, I'm actually holding the tail of the ring that I just made with my fingers, so that way I can actually hide it into the stitches as I'm going along. So if you see, I just made the tail disappear inside of the stitches. That's one way of hiding that initial one right away. That way you don't ever have to go back and hide it later. All right, so I'm coming up on the ending of the first row, and I just wanted to bring you guys back because sometimes some people don't realize, but here's an opportunity where your yarn can twist sometimes. So you want to really make sure before you finish it, just pull on your yarn a little bit and make sure, see how everything is nice and flat and on the same side? That means you are doing good, and when you finish it, uh, so technically it ends right there, that's the last one. You want to go ahead and find that first hole that you started. Uh, remember, we did a plus one. So you want to go ahead and close that, and then pull that yarn through. And you just finished your first row. We're going to work on our front cables for our trimming, our ribbing. Now the rule is, usually, is you want to do one more uh, stitch um, in accordance to how you increase. So what I mean by that is since we are doing half double crochets and you increase by one, that means that your front cable are going to be double crochets. And same thing. So if you were to do two increments here and you were going to do double crochets all going all the way around, you would do triple crochet on the front cable. And the reason for that is because if you do it the exact same length of your increase it's going to tighten up and it's going to curl your project in and that's not what we want i always like to do two and then i'll go ahead and work on what i'm doing so in this case i'm doing two ribbing here two half double crochets make sure you count two and then you're going to go ahead and do two double crochets for the front post then two half double crochets and then count your, your stitches and two double crochets for the front post. You're going to go ahead and repeat this all the way through for about four rows, depending on how big you want your ribbing to be. And I will bring you guys right back after I finish a couple rows of this, okay? So you're doing two double for front post, two half doubles when you're not. And don't get confused right away. As soon as that stitch ends, you're going to go ahead and put that half double crochet in there. Don't overcomplicate it. You don't have to search for your yarn and make sure you're counting your stitches so that way you're not skipping or adding too many, okay? All right, welcome back guys. So as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, and I'm on the fifth row here. After five rows, you guys can kind of see the ribbing going on right there. And for me, that seems about, if I put it on, I mean, you can base it off your hoodie here or whatever sweater you have, but for me that seems to be enough because I kind of want to make sure I have enough to make two mittens. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and do a half double crochet into each row or each stitch. Now don't get confused, literally anywhere where you see an open hole is where you're going to put a half double crochet in there so we can finally begin the body of the mittens. Don't overthink it because I know sometimes, especially when we do front cables, we can get a little confused as to what is a stitch and what is an extra space created from the front cables, but don't worry about that. You know, and you can, if you really, really are having doubts as to what, where the um, placement of the yarn should be at, then go ahead and count your stitches. You should have the same amount that you started with. Okay, so we're finishing up, and I love how this colorway is playing out. Really, really nice. I love it because it kind of gave you a nice little trim up here. Okay, so we're coming up on the last one. Go ahead and close it up. Pull through. All right, you just did the initial half double crochet base for the body. Okay. And now what we're going to do is we kind of cheat a little bit and make our stitches, our cables a little bit bigger. So that's what we're going to do, okay? If we are increasing by two to do double crochets where we are not doing cable work, how many stitches do you need to do the cables? Huh? Remember, you add one. So if we are doing double here, that means 
that our cabling is going to be triple crochet. In order to do triple crochet, you gotta do twice, loop around. Oop, twice, loop around. Grab that first stitch. One, two, three. Twice, loop around. One, two, three. And remember, we're doing basket weave stitch, and I believe I said that our increments are going to be four, and that's why you count to four. That four is for the basket weave cabling that we're going to be doing, okay? And now, since we increased by two for double crochet, we're going to do double crochet on the spaces that don't have the basket front post weave stitch, okay? So we're going to do that for two. I mean four, excuse me, we're going to do four double crochets because you did four cables here. And once again, we're going to do, make sure you count, one, two, three, four, so you're not skipping any stitches. You're going to do a triple crochet into the next four stitches after that. Okay? So at this point, we have four cable, four double, four cable, and you're going to repeat that until you have enough of the body of the mittens. We just did this for one, two, three rows, and you have your little box going on there, motif for the basket weave. And so now, after the third row, one, two, three, we're gonna alternate, okay? So remember, whenever we do these back rows, we're doing double crochet, okay? Which means that this first four are gonna be double crochet. You're doing the inverse of what came before it, okay? So wherever you see a front post, you're now gonna do a simple double crochet. You're gonna do that four times, and you can count two if you get confused. So one, two, three, four. And then now we're gonna do our triple crochet, grabbing that first one that you know comes right after the post, okay? Triple crochet four times. Okay, and then right away, so that first stitch right after your cable, okay? You guys can see that? Don't get too confused. Add the double crochet in there. One, two, three. And I like to think about it in terms of the stitch to the right. Whenever you're gonna pick whatever stitch you're doing, stay consistent with that. So if you're gonna pick the left side, always pick the left side. But in this case, I'm picking the right side of that stitch. And again, you can always count if you ever get confused as to what, where it's supposed to go, okay? Every four, you're rotating. Every four, you're alternating. Cool? So you guys can see, now we're getting that different cabling here and then flat down here. Now, if you do know that this person will be using these gloves for very, very cold weather, um, then I would suggest maybe not doing increasing of double crochets and actually just doing half double crochets. But for the purpose of this, we want to make sure that we have enough yarn to do two mittens. So they are going to be a little bit spaced out in terms of the stitches. And like I said, if you need them tighter, because air might go through them, but we just need them to just cover up the hand. So uh, that's what we're doing here. But if you, again, if you want them to be more covered up, then you can just do what we're doing down here, which is a little bit more tension, less air can go through, okay? Welcome back. So now I have done my basket weave, one, two, three, but here I only have two rows of it because as I'm testing it out and I'm putting it on, I kind of want to stop here because now what we're going to do is if you did sufficiently enough, there's two ways you can go about doing this next section. Um, if you're like me and you do this part and it just happens that your thumb is like big enough to fit here when you're pinching here and it feels comfortable on these to like open up and it's not too rough, you can actually stop the here and what you're just going to do is you're actually just going to connect these together when you are doing that row. So either you can do put a stitch marker here or you can just remember because this is actually in increments of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, after I pinched, I counted the amount of stitches for my thumb. So I know that at some point I have to do eight stitches, close it on the eighth. And then from here, you're just going to continue the basket weave up here and just do this uh, simple. You, I, would, I would not recommend doing basket weave here on the thumb just because um, 
you want to have it a little bit flat on the tip so in case they need to grab something they are able to so I would not recommend doing a basket weave stitch here on the thumb just keep it nice and flat with double crochets or half double crochets okay for starting here this would actually be the best way to look at it um, your thumb is going to be here what I'm going to do executive decision is close this up so continue the circle here um, so count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know that these are going to be closed off from the rest. And I'm just going to do the circle from here to here. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So continuing this last row, one, two. Remember we're doing triple crochet on the front cables. double crochet in the back that's actually our eighth right here so let's see where that ends one two three four so on this final one we can actually stop just to keep things nice and even okay so here okay we have our space for our thumb okay so we just finished the last basket weave and you're just going to if you hold this together side to side, just close it up, bam. And you just closed off that section. So now you have the thumb here and you have this part here. And you just continue from there. So that was our last one for the basket weave. So now we're gonna alternate and now we are working on the body of the half, okay? So let me go ahead and do this and then I'm gonna show you guys what it's gonna look like after I finish one more row. Cool, so I'm just finishing up that last row or this row. Go ahead and just do a little tie and then now you guys should be able to see exactly what we're doing here. See that? We're working on the body of the hand. We have a nice little basket weave motif going and you have your ribbing already down here and it's nice and snug so that way you're not uh, stressing out too much about it falling off or anything so uh, we're gonna go back and do the exact same thing we're doing this body but here on the thumb but for all intents and purposes what we're doing now is just this part of the finger so continue going and then we're gonna decrease at the end all right you guys so this is where we are at now we're pretty much almost there so i think what i'm going to do for all intents and purposes is just do half double crochets for the rest of it oh, so coming up i just did my two rows of half double crochet so i just closed that up and now we're going to decrease so when i say decrease on the second what i mean is so you're going to chain one for your next row you're going to do one two and then you're going to seamless decrease so you're going to grab that front loop and you're going to grab the back loop of the next stitch Pull the yarn through, pull through, and you just seamlessly combine two stitches right there. One, two, front loop, back loop. One. Okay, so I'm coming up on the last two. I just decrease, so two, and then close this row up. Do a little check, so see, we're almost done closing up. So you might just actually have to do just one. Um, so you're going to decrease after every one. So one, decrease the next two, one, decrease the next two, one, decrease the next two, one, and in case this happens where you just have one stitch, that's fine. Just go ahead and fill that in. Don't overcomplicate it. And then close up. Cool. And then now when you have this, see how you're getting that little decrease right there? So that's how you're gonna decrease this. Cut this yarn and then you're gonna weave it in and out, alternating on the rows, and then just pull on the inside, and then you're done. So actually, let me get some scissors and show you. All right, so you really don't need that much yarn to weave through but if you are one of those people that just get scared always do more but for me i already know i probably need not even probably like that much okay so you're gonna go ahead and close it off in terms of pulling it chain one pull through so that way that doesn't come apart and now if you turn it up this way you can see these stitches are here 
Let's just go ahead and start weaving. Weave one in. Weave one out. Weave one in. Weave one out. Weave one in. Weave one out. And I think this is the last one here. Weave one in. Okay. Grab it through on the other side. You can turn it inside out at this point so that way you can easily grab it or it'll hold somewhere here. Okay. I'm just going to grab that yarn. Pull it nice and tight. You're going to pull it. Grab just one of the stitches that's on the inside. And you're just going to do a nice little knot in there. So grab your yarn. Pull through. Pull through that. And make sure if you have nails, just like pull it down as close as you can. So that way it prevents it from moving. And voila! You closed off that mitt. Test it out. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Check that out. And now you're just going to go ahead and do the same thing here in the thumb, doing half double crochets. Just keep it nice and simple. And you're going to decrease exactly as I did. So you're going to do two decrease on the second, and then one decrease on the after the first one. But that's how you do one mitt. And you definitely should have enough to do a second mitt. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments down below. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the second mitt, and then I'll bring you guys right back for final thoughts. So taking a look at this, I kind of want to color control so they come out as close to as possible. So looking at the ball of yarn, I can see that this light blue and the gray is right there. So this dark teal is actually not in the rest of it. I think it's only one more time in there. So I think I'm going to use this for the thumb part. That way they're both even, but I can see that it's going to go in the same order that it did here. So I'm going to actually unwind this until I get to this light blue. That way everything is nice and simple. And this repeated the red twice. So I can see red once right there and red twice here. So I know I should be able to get a second glove out of this. And then the dark teal part will be for the thumb. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll do the second glove. But just wanted to mention that little note to Okay, so final notes on doing the mitten. I just closed up the thumb hole of the mitten and the final steps in terms of doing it because we're, we're doing half double crochets to make sure that they have some grip when they're using this because with the basket weave, there will be too much texture. So what I did was five rows of half double crochet, which is what this green part is and like a couple of these rows. And then I decreased exactly the same like I did over here. So two rows of decreasing on the second and then decreasing uh after every other stitch and then you close it up and you close this up okay so i'm gonna go ahead and do this again on the other glove so you guys can see how that actually looked and then i'm gonna go back and tie that off so let's go ahead and grab our second glove here i have my other yarn here from the other ball i'm gonna unwind to the teal part and I'll leave a little bit of the sky blue on there for the tail so that way when you tie your knot, you're not actually cutting off the teal part, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and starting on the inside, so we have the thumb hole here, I'm actually going to start on that last stitch there. Go ahead and tie a knot on your yarn, pull through, chain one and you're just going to do one half double crochet into each stitch now when you're going here into these stitches of the glove any place where you see a space is where you're going to put a half double crochet in there. five rows and we're going to decrease for two decreasing on the second stitch and then we're going to decrease on every other stitch and then we're going to close it up all right, so I just did five rows and we're going to decrease on the second. So one, two, half double crochets, and then decrease the next two stitches. Remember, we're doing our seamless decrease, front loop and then back loop. Two half double crochets and then our seamless decrease. Two half double crochets and then our seamless decrease. And we're going to do this for two complete rows. And then we're going to decrease after every other stitch just for one row. And then we're going to close it up. And voila, you're done. And of course, we're going to start weaving in our yarn in and out. 
don't split your yarn because I already did and it is very easy to split your yarn during this step so just take your time in and out in and out and so when you pull your yarn through after closing it you're gonna go ahead and grab it any stitch that's nearby and you're just gonna do your final knot of it you're gonna pull the string through chain one and just pull that yarn through and if you have nails put it as close to the yarn as you can and you are done and you officially have finished your mitten look at that with a little thumb it's got a little thumb now <laughs> so see i made it enough tall enough so that way any adult could wear it there's still a little bit of space left in there but because of the half double crochets it's not gonna it will provide some type of grip for whoever's using it so um just do that same thing to the other side and you have two similar mitts there you go so thank you guys so much for following and watching this tutorial let me know if you guys are able to follow the directions and if you do make sure you tag me on instagram at cpt limon and it, let me know that you guys try this this is a one skein dk weight type of project and if you are participating at Miss Pearl's Share the Warmth campaign, I hope you pick the DK weight and you try your hand at these basket weave mittens using James C. Brett yarn or whatever yarn that is in your bag. So yeah, so shout out to Miss Pearl. Hopefully you guys can try this out. Don't forget to tag me and don't forget to like and subscribe and wait for the next video. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. All right, you guys, it's time for shout outs. Let's thank our members who made this episode possible. Uh, let's go ahead and go down our Limon Influencer section. We got creations by Yankee Christina, Jillian, Froggy Wanna Knitting, Carrie the Yawny Elephant, Corey Schlereth, Blanca Valtierrez, Cocktails and Crochet with Coco, and Karen Miller. Thank you guys so, so much for your support. You guys are awesome. And let's go ahead and do our inner circle. We have Liz Miller. Fiber Floozy Crafts, Teresa DePap, Tamara Miller, Milliard, and Ola Joe the Crocheting Sailor. Thank you so, so much, everybody. You guys are awesome, and you make this experience, like I said, so exciting to do. Um, and then, like, quick shout-out to our Limon family. We got Raspberry Barret, Granny D, Knit Pearl and Squirrel with Granny D, Susan, Lisa, Rose, Amanda, and Lauren. Thank you so much, everybody. You guys are awesome. You guys really make this experience one of a kind. And I cannot wait to see what we have in store when we go live and when we put up new episodes. So stay tuned, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.